guys. I'm back in my garage. Ta-da! For those of you that are new to my channel and you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, I just got back from Boston. Long story, but there's a link to the last video. I'll get you caught up. Anyway, today I'm going to be working on Mr. Dose, my MR2 project car, and we're going to be addressing some electrical issues. So, I have a dead battery in the car. It is a fairly new battery, however, it is dead. So, what I need to do is get a new battery because this one is destroyed. It has zero volts in it, there's no saving it. I think it's got a bad cell, but I need to see if I have a parasitic draw that is causing this battery to die because it was only like six months old. So I am going to get a new battery right now at the auto parts store and then we can continue troubleshooting and working on the MR2. So heavy. And fast forward a day. What? Come on, I'm trying to do some special effects here for you guys. All right, uh, now that I got the battery in the MR2, let's try to figure out if I have a parasitic draw. And then after that, the next thing I'm moving on to is the idle air control valve. So before any of you say anything in the comments, yes, I didn't buy X name brand of battery. And the reason being is I have an Optima in my Forester. I've had other AGM batteries. I've had lesser name brand batteries. And it doesn't really matter what battery I put in my car. Living here in Arizona with our extreme heat and temperature, pretty much batteries just fail after two years. So I bought one from the auto parts store that has warranty on it and it's good enough for me. So now to do the amperage draw test, what you're going to do is take a digital voltmeter or multimeter, whatever you want to call it. Make sure your ground is in the calm position and then you have your um, red lead on whatever your highest amperage rating position is. So mine's 10 amp. And then you're going to set the multimeter on amperage to test for a draw. And you want to make sure it's on DC, direct current. You can tell by the straight line with the little dots, not alternating current AC, which would be the little sine wave right here so now they got in DC I always start at the highest setting which is 10 amps right here and I don't think I would have a draw that high I could probably kick it down at 2 but we're gonna keep it in 10 I'm gonna disconnect the negative lead on my battery and then I'm going to connect one lead to the negative terminal going to the car and the other lead to the battery and see what I register so it looks like I am reading point, point 0.3. So I'm basically registering like a quarter of an amp draw. So what I have to do now is use process of elimination to determine what circuit on the car is causing that draw. So I'm just gonna pop fuses until the draw disappears. And once I pop that fuse that corresponds to the amp draw, I can isolate down to a ballpark idea of what's causing the draw. Okay. It was just an awkward pause. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the main culprit of where I think this is coming from and pull FLAM1. Oh, ho oh, ho, that wasn't it. Okay, that's good. So that means it's not coming from the engine bay. Well, I guess I could try FLAM2. That'd be the other one covering most of the wiring back there in the engine bay. And that wasn't it either. All right, good. I highly doubt it's radiator fan. I guess I'll pull all of them just in case. Nope, nope. Uh, dome light. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Dome light. I pulled the dome light fuse and it dropped down to zero. That's so crazy. I mean, it's not really crazy. It's a really common circuit to cause a draw if you leave your dome light on. But in this case, my dome light is not on and it's still causing a draw. So weird. So now to figure out this idle air control valve issue, which is this guy located down underneath the intake manifold. And that is what's causing this thing to idle like absolute crap because it doesn't even have 12 volts going to it on the B plus circuit, which it should. So I gotta fix that issue. And I can't just order a new one because they don't make it anymore. So I'm gonna take it apart and see if I can clean it and if there's, I can see anything visibly wrong with it. I also, once I have that fixed, need to adjust the timing on the distributor because right now the distributor is pretty much maxed all the way out just to keep this thing idling, which is causing it to run ridiculously rich. It smells like an old farm tractor in here. This probably doesn't help that it has 
old gas mixed with fresh gas. Should probably drop my fuel tank, but it's almost full. So I removed my throttle body from the intake manifold and as you can see I can put all the hardware back in the same holes because it makes life easier later so you don't wonder what bolt goes where. Now on the bottom of the throttle body right here, this valve assembly where there's two coolant lines that go through it and there's this little electronic pack on the back side, this is my idle air control valve. There are three terminals on here. I believe the center one should be B plus, that is the positive 12 volt signal that supplies power to this and that does not have 12 volts going to it so that's a problem I need to address. However, when I jumped 12 volts there it still didn't work so I'm going to fix the voltage issue, I'm going to make sure I have power going to there but I also need to take that valve apart or at least I'm going to try to see if there's anything I can clean inside there and see if I can figure out why it's not working. Oh, this is making me nervous. Oh, it's an electromagnet, okay. I see how that works. So, let me explain this to you guys. Um, basically, what this thing works on is it's electromagnet. When I was pulling it off, it had some residual magnetism, like it was had some suction trying to pull it off because it's a magnet. So, I guess there's three signals. There's one that provides 12 volts, and then the other two, I guess, vary the strength of the magnetic field possibly from a signal from the ECU. I don't know, I'm gonna have to Google how this works. First I wanna take off the mechanical side of it and see if the valve body is gunked up and I can just clean it. Maybe that's the issue. That will be the easiest solution. Okay. This right here is the idle air control valve. Now down here is a coolant passageway where coolant goes through. This right here, this little slit that's surrounded by black gunk is for controlling your idle. That is where the air passes through. Now as you see, it's covered in black crap and it's stuck half open. See a little gate open and close? Well, it's really not turning very easy. It's kind of binding up because of the carbon that's all over it. So you gotta think, if there's resistance with me just turning that with my fingers, a little tiny electromagnet is gonna have a hard time opening and closing that. So I'm going to clean it up really well, and hopefully, when I provide 12 volts to it by fixing that wire, it will work, and this thing will idle, and then I can set my timing on the distributor. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I'm so happy. Hopefully this is it, though. There we go, I got it nice and cleaned up. And as you can see, like, it's super easy to move now. Like, really easy. I was gonna try to get this cleaned up. Um, I did scrape it, the razor blade, so it's nice and smooth now, but it just still has like stains on it. But the O-ring looks to be in good condition, so I'm just gonna clean everything back up, and I'm going to apply 12 volts to that valve, and then, um, from what I understand from reading up on it, the ECU varies the ground to the side terminals and that is what turns that little valve left or right. So I'm going to see if I can actuate it with applying 12 volts to it and a ground and see if I can make it open and close. And if it works, then I know the valve is good. It's raining really hard out there. Ready? Boom, it works. Works good too. All right, now let's see the other side. Yep. Open. Close. Is it wet? I'm very wet. <laughs> I bought an umbrella because we didn't have any. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah, they had like two of them left. That's really smart. Yeah.
here goes nothing. See if this thing will idle on its own. Now, it probably won't because my distributor timing is not set correctly. But we'll see. Let's just see what happens. Alright, I have it figured out. I know why it's idling like crap right now and probably why it was running like crap before. This janky homemade intercooler piping that I have on this car that came with the car when I bought it, the uh, hose clamps going from the intercooler to the intake manifold are not creating a tight enough seal around that pipe and there's air bypassing past it. It was pushed all the way up to the bend where it's slightly larger radius and it was clamped down back here Looking at it now, it's really obvious, and I'm amazed that I missed this, but considering this car had so many different problems in so many different areas, it's easy for really simple problems to slip by because you're focused on like 90 different things at once. So now I need to go to the auto parts store and see if I can get a universal silicone coupling to just put on there for now, even though I want to throw away this intercooler piping because it's absolute garbage and need to get some new piping, but for now, let's just go to the auto parts store and see what I can get. That looks like some pretty good boost weather out there today. Morning, peoples. All right, it's the next morning, and I'm gonna go to the store now and get the coupling for the intercooler piping, the silicone coupling, and I'm gonna go borrow a timing light so you can time the distributor timing on this thing and hopefully get to drive it because it's 71 degrees outside right now and it's kind of moist and it's perfect boost in weather. O'Reilly's was a no-go for the cup link. They didn't have anything. The inside diameter or outside diameter of that intercooler piping is two and three sixteenths. And then the intercooler itself is about three inches. So it's a massive step down. It's gonna be really hard to find a cup link on a pinch just to make this work. So I couldn't get a silicone cup link anywhere that would fit this. So I'm gonna order a intercooler piping set for the MR2, but just so we can try this out, just for test purposes, I'm gonna get creative with some electrical tape. Yeah, buddy. That'll work right there. It seals on there pretty well. So, <laughs> whatever. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? What a mess. So, after I untangle this, we're going to set the timing since the distributor is all the way maxed out on this thing just to get it to idle. This gets hooked up to the number one spark plug and then for the timing light to work, basically I just have to hook up these two leads to power and ground should go the battery, but because it's mid-engine, I'll have to do a power source back here. To be able to set the timing, I gotta put the ECU in learn mode, I think it's called. So here's a diagnostic port, and I'm jumping these two ports together. I think it's TE1 and E1, I believe. I jump those two together and now it puts the ECU in learn mode so it doesn't automatically try to adjust the timing so that way I can adjust it. And then down here, it's almost impossible to see, but down here there's the marks on the lower case and the crank pulley where I'm gonna shine my timing light to adjust my timing on the distributor. It looks not up, top one's loose. Now I should be able to rotate the distributor. Yep, so I'm gonna stick it like right in the middle. Okay. You just start this guy up and let it get to operating temperature. So.
I can't set the timing because the timing light doesn't work. It doesn't turn on. I like triple checked all the connections. It just, it doesn't work. I just kind of like set it in the middle where I could see there were some wear marks on the bracket for the distributor. So hopefully it's a close enough baseline. I gotta get a timing light now and I don't have time before I can get this video done for you guys. So I'm just gonna try driving it because it does sound a lot smoother. It's idling nice now. And um, it'll just give me an idea. I'm not gonna try to push it too hard just because the timing's not set precisely. But yeah, let's see how this goes. Starts up nicely. It idles nicely. drives finally after a year oh so happy something is leaking oh it's got a little coolant leak a little tiny one i'll have to see where it's leaking from it's probably just a hose i forgot so happy all right i'm gonna go get this video edited for you guys so you can enjoy this as much as i'm enjoying it right now hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you soon with another bye <laughs>